What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today, well today, oh no it's upside down. Well we're gonna leave that in. <laughs> today we're talking about glass dip pens. <laughs> I don't know what that was for. I just decided to be weird. Uh, so today we're talking about glass dip pens. I've had many. This is actually the only one I have now. Um, this is the original one that I bought uh, from Boulet Pens, actually, and the only reason why I remember is because there's a sticker on the back uh, that tells me. <laughs> but this one obviously is Roar and Klingner. Um, and whoa! <laughs> uh, it's just a little like cardboard box. Um, and it's the only one I have. I did have like multiple, but. I decided just to keep one, and this was the one that I liked the best, like the look of. It's really hard to show you on camera because like it's kind of see-through, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Like stunning. So um, it's obviously glass <laughs> and has like colored glass swirled throughout it. And like if you just twirl it, it sort of like puts you into that dreamlike state. <laughs> it's so cool. And that's something that I really like about glass dip pens. Uh, and, and fountain pens in general, to be fair, like there's, there's a lot that goes behind the design. Uh, much like a fountain pen, glass dip pens ultimately need to have one design in common. Uh, and that is essentially like, well, glass and be a dip pen but <laughs> but it needs to have the fluted uh, flutes <laughs> like the actual nib itself needs to have those deep grooves that kind of twirl because this is where all the ink sits in and then gravity just sort of like pulls it down the flute unlike a fountain pen that has capillary action in the feed that sort of pulls it down from the converter uh, this is primarily just gravity and then it kind of like comes down but all of those little flutes all those little grooves uh, is what holds on to the ink um, and then it just kind of goes down from there um, depending on how far you dip in to the ink bottle or whatever kind of ink thing you're using uh, will depend on how much it fills up if you dip it all the way to the top It's gonna fill with a ton of ink and when you write your first line, it's just gonna go like And you're gonna have so much ink it's bananas um, But hey, that could be the look you're going for um, And you can really use these for anything you can draw you can write you can doodle you can stare at it you can put yourself into a trance like i'm doing right now <laughs> you really can do anything you want with a glass dip pen asmr um i bought it because when i was in the beginning of the hobby i was buying anything related to the fountain pen world uh, because i just didn't know what i liked and what i didn't like uh, and I like this one quite a bit um, like I said I've purchased multiple now and I realize I don't need multiple uh, unlike fountain pens where you can never have enough but always seem to have too many <laughs> uh, I'm 100% satisfied with one and I don't feel the need to purchase another the only reason why I ever would uh, would be for twofold a if this broke um, slash lost it or B if one comes out that my jaw just smacks off the floor because it's that beautiful, uh, but I have yet to have that. So I'm good with just the one because I don't use it super often. Uh, there's two main reasons why I use a glass dip pen. The first and probably the most common um, or most frequent reason why I use a glass dip pen is when I buy ink samples uh, and I know that I'm not gonna put it in a pen right away. 
and what I mean by right away is like a couple months, uh, then I will use a glass dip pen just to kind of like write a few lines, play around with it, um, just to sort of experience that ink sample right when I get it. Um, excuse me. And then kind of put put it to the side and go through the rest of the samples I have or, or whatever. Um, so to test out ink samples is pretty much the main reason why I use a glass dip pen. Um, second reason is sometimes I do like to uh, either sign my name or um, like sometimes Christmas cards. I'm, I'm super consistently inconsistent <laughs> with Christmas cards or holiday letters. Uh, but I will use glass dip pens for that because I'll use like shimmery inks. Um, and I don't really like shimmery inks in fountain pens because they are a bit of a pain to clean. Um, it's a bit of a pain to use like the glass dip pen too because you constantly have to shake the bottle. Uh, to be fair, shimmery inks are just a pain in general. <laughs> um, but it's way, way easier uh, to clean out of a glass dip pen because really all you do is either like swirl it around in a cup of water, run it under the sink for like a second and you're good to go. Uh, you can also use this for uh, like pigmented inks. Uh, you could use it for calligraphy ink. You could use it for fountain pen ink. Um, you can use these really for anything because you can't damage it. Uh, theoretically, you could stain it, um, but you're not gonna like damage the function of the pen. Uh, which is kind of nice. Um, so you can just kind of do whatever your heart desires. Um, so there's that. Uh, if you hear scratching in the background, as always, Parker decided to use the litter box whilst I am filming. Um, so those are like the main reasons why I use the glass dip pen. Um, and I mean, I, I really like it. It's not a super duper smooth experience always. Um, because it does kind of depend, you know, on the paper you're using, uh, how smooth the tip of the glass is. When you buy a brand new glass dip pen, usually it's sharper. Um, and then as you continue to use it, it does dull a little bit. Uh, so that writing experience does get nicer as you use it. Um, like I said, I've had this one for many a year now. Um, and it's still like fairly sharp, but not like it was. Um, I don't use pen, glass dip pens um, often enough to know if it will like ever get to the point where it's like super worn down that like I would need to buy a new one. Uh, if there's anyone watching this right now who does use glass dip pens very, very, very consistently and has had that happen, please let me know and let everyone else know in the comment section down below, um, just so that we can have that as part of the community. Um, but it's, uh, it's definitely something that I always want one glass step pen in my collection. Um, but it's not something that I'm like wanting to collect or have any desire to have more than one, uh, because I use it probably about a dozen times a year, um, and don't really have the need to use it more. But do I recommend getting a glass dip pen? 100% yes. Uh, they're not super expensive. Uh, you can get ones that are really expensive if you get like the crazy designs, ones that are like, you know, blown that are like, you know, got like a phoenix or something in it. <laughs> um, but uh, they're super handy to have at least one on hand. Um, and especially if you like to use inks that are kind of, you know, scary for you to put into fountain pens, this is perfect. So do I recommend continuing to have a glass dip pen in your collection? Yes. Yes, I do. So years and years later, do I still like it? Absolutely. Has my opinion changed of it from when I first got it? Nope, not really. Um, it's the perfect utilitarian tool to have once in a while. So those are my overall thoughts. Um, like I said, I've had this one since either 2015 or 2016. I can't quite remember, but um, yeah, years later, glass dip pen. What do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, if you use them daily, if you use them kind of like me, let me know. Uh, while you're down there, do hit that like, subscribe. New videos come out every Monday and Friday and the occasional on Tuesday. Uh, check out the description for my Patreon account if you want to help support me and what I do here on this channel. 
And as always, if you're still watching this far into the video, I love you and I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, everybody, it's time again to thank the Patreon crew. I'm filming this as of September 12th, 2022. So if you don't see your name here, I do update these regularly. We have two ultimate humans, Mr. Daniel Roddy and Comp Dave. And for my VIP tier, we have Susan, McCall Bennett Lawrence, Karen Epstein, Gretchen Peters, Carol Lowry, Michael Simon, Subiwan Kenobi, Catherine Molina, Weile Chang, Brian Law, Bill Pemberton, Lucas Bell, Robert Myers, Marissa Calvo, Eric Lineman, Jessica Chow, DigitalTent.Tech, Brian Hunter, Bobby A. Bailey, Bass, Joan Worthman, Luna Wolf Games, Aaron C., and Glenn Kelly. Thank you, everyone who supports me, whether you're in the shout out tier or not. You all help make this dream possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And once again, I'll see you next time. Bye.